I'm Lynn Bartlett. I'm treasurer of the Association for Contemporary Jewellery and a titanium nut. I think that's the best description. Um, this project is a collaboration between ACJ who, and their touring exhibition to celebrate 20 years of the ACJ. Mine is about titanium, which is an absolutely magical metal. I find it amazing that you can colour something without the use of inks and dyes. And this video will show you how you can do it, uh, both using heat and electricity and the range of colours you can get. Um, it's called interference colour and it's akin to what you see when you get petrol on a wet road and also the colours you get in bubbles. The thing about titanium is that it's a poor conductor of heat and so therefore what you can do is play a flame on one end Oops. and it goes, you can get it red hot at one end and you can still hold it. Oops. But you also develop the colour as, the, as it moves slowly along the piece. This is one of the things that gives you problems with titanium because with heating other metals, the heat diffuses and you can get even effects. With titanium, you have to be careful that you play the flame all over the piece to get equal heating. To get an even colour, you need a, a fairly bushy flame and you need to move it around the piece. It takes a little while for the, the metal to start to heat up. You can see. If you want an even colour, it's best to try doing it fairly slowly otherwise you will get hot spots. Even so, it's difficult to avoid hot spots with heating because of the poor conductivity of the metal. You can see already you're getting differential colouring, but the colours are going through the spectrum colours that you expect to develop on titanium. And some of the underlying pattern will reflect what has happened to the metal in its production process um, because this has only been roughly cleaned and not homogenized as you would need to do for a, a particularly precise piece. But we're just showing how the colors develop and just how high a color or the full range of colours that you can get when you're using heat. A lot of pieces you see are blue because the blue of titanium is a particularly vibrant colour and there are very few other ways to get that sort of blue in, in jewellery without using gemstones or enamel. After the vibrant blue, you get a range of paler blues before it switches to a yellow. As the oxide layer gets thicker, which is what the heating is doing, you get different colours appearing, as if by magic, because there's no 
nothing went involved. There you can see I let it dwell too much in the middle there for a bit, so we, we've got to try and equalise the rest of the sheep to... Whoops, I should try growing out. I think this piece is going to equalise, but at least it shows you the pitfalls of heat colouring as well as the potential. And of course, there's no danger of melting the titanium because it, it needs 16, 1700 degrees before it will do that. So, whereas you can melt your silver. If you continue beyond a certain point then it will go grey because the layer of oxide has become too thick to exhibit the interference. Is use this piece as is and then do some filing tests on it to see what effect you can do. This pink is the second order colours so you go through one band of colour and then through another one. These were recorded by Newton actually and known as Newton rings in the scientific world but he couldn't explain them interestingly enough because he thought light was particles and this behaviour is only explained by if you regard light as, as wavelengths. So here we're heating a, a piece of cleaned titanium that has been treated by putting a pattern on with a photocopy and the heating should produce different colours where the photocopy elements have taken on the metal. a good blue but not the pattern hasn't not very well defined so probably the photocopy was not strong enough the blank spaces have been lightly filed with a needle file to create the contrast and this should, when heated, come out better than just the plain photocopy. This is a smaller piece of metal, so it should be easier to heat more evenly. Sometimes it's a good idea just to take the flame away to, to let what heat there is dissipate a bit so as you can see how it's coming along. I think I might leave it there. It shows that what is possible. So this is the piece with the failed photocopy but all is not lost because you can put in pattern by filing at random across the surface and the more 
what you do is you're taking off the oxide layer so that when you heat it the next time these pieces will colour at a different rate and really as random as you can make it. So this is a, the heat coloured piece with the multicolours and we'll just do Again, the principle is just taking off the oxide layer or most of the oxide layer so that it will colour again from the beginning and go through the same colour range. A simple pattern. You can do whatever you like. Um, this is just one possibility. So you can see the silvery bits which are the natural titanium colour. And they will pick up right you can almost paint with a flame but it takes a bit of adjustment and practice show and you of course can repeat this so that you can get different layers of purpley shade and the blue has gone a paler blue if I were doing this um, as a as a finished piece I would probably do at least one more filing if not two to get a multi-layered effect. Uh, this is the piece with the more organized filing although you can do it even more precisely than this. But you see that you get little flashes of light where there are little bits of titanium dust because titanium is used in fireworks. I mean, if you had a lot of it, it would be dangerous. So um, while a few sparks are fun, I, I wouldn't advise it for, because titanium powder can be explosive in quantities. The thing that is quite key when you're colouring titanium is to know the sequence of the colours. And you know, if you're aiming for something specific, to recognise when you're nearly there, like the stop on the tube before the one you want to get off or something like that. You can see the background is, is giving up on colour because the oxide layer has really got quite thick. Well, this was just a trial piece, so um, I had access to quite a powerful torch, and so I tried to see what colour I could get with that. So that was just a, a trial thing. This, was, this is titanium in the raw, um, so using to try different forms and things like that. But this is a heat-coloured piece, with filing so um, I think I had to make a couple of brooches and I wanted to see what could be done so in doming the piece so titanium is movable it's it's quite can be quite hard but you can get a, a simple shape and then coloring by heat and also trying to make sure there was a a central circle in it so playing the flame carefully around the middle 
that's just simple colouring and filing. And then I decided to try using a photocopy. And if you have a fresh photocopy onto titanium with acetone on the back, you can lift the carbon from the photocopy and it goes onto the titanium and makes as a resist so that when you heat it you get two colours and that's moderately successful it, it's it's one of those uh, methods that will or won't work so because of that I tried using a photocopy but um, using a felt tip pen to emphasize some of the lines so that there was particular carbon definitely there and that worked quite well this is from a, an old lino cut I did many moons ago so and it was a drawing of a stuffed tiger so it has a long history <laughs> this also again using the photocopy technique but trying to make sure that you kept the photocopy image I just used a, a simple needle file and just in, went round the outline just gently filing it so that you got a different surface and that produced a different effect and it's quite effective so moving from the photocopy to the other ones and then back to filing but um, rather than the random filing you get on those doing it in particular directions to get more obvious contrast and this is a similar thing except that instead of just taking a file across the surface I've used a ruler and a, a stronger file so that you you get more straight lines basically um, and the original piece is heat coloured one of the earliest uses for stainless steel it was celebrating a hundred years of stainless steel and one of the earliest uses for stainless steel was cutlery so I decided that I would make a cutlery neck piece so we have a knife a fork a spoon and a dessert fork and they are hand cut from titanium sheet and then heat coloured using the random filing technique to get a bit of pattern into the and then the fork acts as a, a closing mechanism at the front. Mm -hmm.